Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin. All right, so this is the full Hydronaut review, and I have a couple pieces of paper here with pluses and minuses of this watch, and I've had these pieces of paper for months, and I just haven't gotten around to to making this video, and, and finally here it is. I've worn this watch a lot. I feel like I know it really well, and so I'm going to go through and tell you what I love about it, what I hate about it. So let's go deep into the Hydronaut 89190. All right, so uh, let's talk about what I like about it. All right, the first thing that I like about it is the Rolex Association. Now, obviously, Tudor and Rolex are two different companies, but they're sister companies, both founded by Hans Wilsdorf. And I'm a huge fan of Rolex, as you know, but sometimes you don't feel like wearing a Rolex and you don't feel like all the good and the bad things that come with having a Rolex on your wrist, uh, you don't feel like having that. And this is sort of a way to have that Rolex feeling, but to use a term that I sometimes throw out, fly under the radar a bit, all right? So, you know, good things can come from having a Rolex on your wrist. You know, you, you have that, that sort of confidence of having a really cool piece, something that you love, something that's really special. But there, there can be some disadvantages as well because, as I've made a, a video um, expressing as much, it can communicate things to other people. Uh, first of all, that you have a Rolex watch and that you had the disposable income to buy it and perhaps you're an easy target. Uh, perhaps you should be a target. Uh, perhaps you are not smart with your money um, to buy such an expensive ostentatious watch. Uh, perhaps you look like a, a jerk or a twat or like you're trying to one-up everybody around you. you know, there are a lot of negative associations with a Rolex and so when I wear this, I don't, I don't have those because the typical person doesn't know of the connection between Tudor and Rolex. And so if I'm in a meeting and I just really want to sort of humble myself and I think, you know, a Rolex is just going to, it's just going to be a little bit uh, too much, then this is perfect. But it still gives me that Rolex connection, and so I like it. I, I feel like this is a secret Rolex of sorts. So that's one thing I like about it. All right, now, another thing that I like about it is the triplock crown. Now, this is waterproof to 200 meters, so it's not quite as able to go as deep as a sub, but it still has a trip lock crown. Now, I think that it probably could go as deep as a sub, all right? I would put my money on the fact that it could. I think that they cripple it a bit on the dial by, you know, putting 200 meters because uh, it's not going to cut into uh, potential sales of a sub, all right? so. If I had to bet, I think it could probably do what a sub does, but uh, but hey, it 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 says 200 meters, and I guess we just have to um, we have to we have to believe it. All right, uh, is 200 meters enough? Yeah, it's enough for me. Um, but it does have the trip lock crown, and that's kind of nice, and I, and that's a very Rolex esque thing. Those uh, three dots there is what that means, and. Um, I look at this as obviously a, a dive watch, and so I look at this as sort of a, um, well, it's post-Tudor sub, but it's pre-Tudor Pelagos. So I look at this as sort of a transition watch between the old Tudor subs and, and the new sort of modern Pelagos watches. And they look kind of similar. And so, you know, I love uh, transition pieces that you can't really get anymore. This is one of them. That's kind of a plus. Uh, I look at it as, as, as sort of a, a sub part two, sort of Tudor's, Tudor's take on something new and a certain extension of that classic sub look. And obviously it's very different, but you know, it's got certain elements and it's clearly a dive watch. It's got the, you know, the sized 40 millimeters and black dial, um, rotating bezel, crown guards, you know, big crown. Um, 
the flip lock, the wetsuit extension. So there are a lot of sub elements here, but but it's just it's a different aesthetic, and that's what I love about it. So you know, some people have said you know you might think about getting a Tudor sub, which would pretty much just look like my. My 14060 Rolex, except it would say Tudor on the dial. So, and plus those are really expensive. So, um, but this is sort of a transition piece. But um, you know, if you check out the Hydronaut Part Two, uh, I think they sort of went off the deep end. And as I put in a comment recently, I think the Hydronaut Part Two could be sort of the the first and the last nail in the coffin of of the Hydronaut series. It was so. Um, well, I hate that you use the word ugly, but it was, let's just use a polite word that means the same thing. It was unique. It was special, right? And I kind of like the Hydronaut Part 2 in a way, just because it is so unique and, and weird and special, but it's really too ugly to actually get my wallet out and buy one. Whereas I think this is attractive, okay? The case is, you know, it's got the same thing going on with the recessed bezel, but um, the the case just looks a lot more tasteful. Same thing with the hand, same thing with the, with the dial, all right? Um, so as far as Hydronauts go, I think this is the Hydronaut to have. All right, so yes, I like it as this sort of transition piece between the Sub and the Pelagos. All right, another thing that I like about it, and we're gonna get to the things I dislike about it, but first let's go through what I like. That's what we're doing right now. The Crown Guard. Okay, the Crown Guards, I should say. Well, maybe, maybe I should say Crown Guard because it's just one crown guard and it's sort of like hollowed out and that's really kind of cool look at that i mean that's a that's a sort of a neat crown guard i mean it really does protect the crown well i mean look, look at the way it just sits right in there and i like that All right um but it's not a complete plus well we'll get to the size of this uh crown situation in, in a minute when we talk about the negatives. Of course, you guys know that I like the recessed bezel. I think that's uh, probably the best thing about this watch. All right, um, the case shape, again, compared to the Hydronaut 2, this is awesome. But it's different, obviously, than the Sub. So it's just, uh, yeah, it's out there. And it is very different from the sub, and I really appreciate that, and I really like that. All right, um, the case height, 11 millimeters. I love thin watches, and so that's a huge plus. Now, another thing that I like, we'll get back to the dial in a minute and, and, and we're this area, but I, I like the bracelet. It's very, very comfortable bracelet, and it's sort of a, a middle road between a Jubilee and the Oyster. Very comfortable, very solid. Now, I'm not a huge fan of polished links, but these are small. You gotta get away with it. Now, there are micro scratches, and that's why I don't like, uh, you know, polished areas on bracelets. And if you're talking um, a polished oyster bracelet, that's a, that's a lot of, that's a big area of polish, and so scratches really do show up there. Here, they're hidden a little bit more, and so I can kind of stomach this. Um, would it look better just totally, totally brushed? I don't know, I don't know. Um, I think, I think no. I don't think that would look so great, but uh, I almost would like to see it. Who knows, that might be, might look nice, but it, nice, but it might, um, might be a little just too much brushed. Uh, it does give it a little bit of, you know, depth and just something different something different so uh but this is as polished as I, as I would want to go all right well the hands some people are not a fan of the hands but actually I am um that little area that's cut away you know this these hands they they look very tutorish I mean you got the tutor shield right there and I don't know this looks like some you know the minute hand looks like some tower some medieval tower or something like that and so it kind of it goes with the uh with with the shield logo in a way and if you didn't have that cut out part it just would look bland and different and sort of samey as other uh hand styles so i really do like 
the way that minute hand stretches out. I mean, it's really tall, really proud, reaches far into the minute markers. And you can't really see the, the hour hand so well, but I like that as well. I mean, it's uh, it's got the, the, the same cutaway part and it, uh, you know, it's an arrow. It, it has the, you know, the little edges right there. And yeah, I, I do like the hand styles. They're, they're, I think they're great. I mean, it, it, it would be a shame if it had, say, the Mercedes hand because it's so subish and it would be a little, you know, a little blase if it had the, the Tudor um, icicle. What am I, what am I, I snowflake, sorry. Uh, the snowflake hands. I mean, these, these are hands that are so unique to this watch and so unique to the Hydronaut One. You will never see hands anywhere on a watch except for on the Hydronaut One. And so, I mean, they, and they fit it well. I mean, just if, if you were to put on, say, sword hands, just straight up sword hands or, or, you know, the the snowflake or, or the, the Mercedes, it just would, would take away from the uniqueness of the Hydronaut as a whole. I mean, this is, this is a, it's a reinvention of the dive watch, you know, going from the sub to this. And they redesigned everything from the ground up. And I don't mean right, redesign like the way, you know, the bezels work or anything like that, but there's nothing, I mean, there's really nothing that uh, is the same about this and and the sub. I mean, from the bracelet to the way the, the bezel um, is recessed into the case, to the case itself, to the, to the, to the uh, crown guard, to the the way the bezel is laid out, to the hands. I mean, everything is different, and it's like they said, okay, let's make a forty millimeter dive watch with a rotating bezel, and let's put all the, you know, functional pieces on it like a, a crown guard. But let's just change everything. Let's just make sure nothing is the same. And I really appreciate appreciate that about it. So I do love the hands, and you know, you don't you don't have the the, the little dot on the second hand. You have, I guess, that would be a, a teardrop, a reverse teardrop, and and then it matches at the end. So you know, I think it's pleasing and it's different. And I think that's the best thing about it. It's different. Instead of round indices, you have the triangle. Sorry, triangle. No, these are rectangles. Yeah, you have rectangular indices. And then you've got uh, something that's kind of explore-esque. You've got the triangle up at the top. And uh, yeah, really nice, long minute markers. And again, the, the second hand and the minute hand reach well into the minute markers, so I love that. It's got the the Cyclops, which is, again, a very, very Rolex-esque element, and I love that. And again, you, you look back and, you know, the, you know that Rolex came up with the, with the Cyclops. It was uh, Hans Wilsdorf's wife, had a hard time seeing the date, and hence the Cyclops was born. And, you know, you'll see Cyclops on, on other brands, and it's like, yeah, I don't know about that. That's kind of a Rolex thing, but Tudor can get away with it. And again, when I see this, I think Rolex. All right. Um, now, the most controversial aspect of this watch is probably the bezel. And, you know, it, it, what is the bezel? I mean, is it is it is it one thing? I think there is a bezel insert. I mean, I think this can be popped out. Um, it's, my guess is it's aluminum, but you can see these raised parts right here and that's you know that's part of the bezel so you've got the you know 15 and 20 and the 25 and the 30 and the 35 right so that's a an interesting part of the bezel insert assuming it is an insert and I think it is and again it's very very different than the typical pre-ceramic sub bezel you know it's it's actually sort of 3d with this uh with this part that that's raised and it's uh, brushed it's not painted it's just um, brushed and so um, 
it seems kind of hard to scratch. I mean, this is, uh, I've worn it and look, there's just, it just looks minty. Now, of course, you have this uh, sort of graduated part up to the 15, and so that's if you're if you're diving, and and I assume you're timing. You don't you don't want to get the bends, and so you gotta stay at a certain certain uh, depth for 15 minutes. And so what you would do, you would, I suppose, All right, starting now. And so, yeah, it, it. I can see how somebody wouldn't like it, but it's so. Hydronaut. I mean, it's it's. If you were to just take that away and just have the the hash marks only, it just would. It would look a little bit more subish, but it just would take away from just the the total weirdness of the of the hydronaut. So, you know, am I a fan of of the way that sort of tapers up like that? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. But it's unique, and I do appreciate it for for that reason. Now. There's no one, there's no one. Okay, so triangle, nothing, two, three, four, and then the ridge is the five. And it's kind of interesting because, because this is sort of important. You have a ridge here and a ridge here and a ridge here and down here, no ridge, right? So the ridges are functional, but again, they're kind of 3D and and just different and, and how many watches have sort of this much texture on the bezel not many not many usually it's just a flat piece of painted aluminum and so that's kind of cool all right um anything else i like about it yeah okay so let's get into what i dislike about it all right let me get this piece of paper all right so what do i dislike about it well Sort of uh, the fact that there's no Rolex on the dial, and you know it doesn't give me that same sort of buzz and excitement of of wearing a Rolex. Okay, so that is a sort of a negative, and I just can't get all the time as excited about this watch um, as as I could, you know, any of my Rolexes. I look down and I see Rolex, and it's just like that. You know, I, I feel part of the Rolex story. My uh. Nap time, by the way. If you're curious. Um, all right, so yeah, no Rolex on the dial, but hey, that's what happens when you buy a Tudor, all right. And and really, that just comes with, um, you know, with having a Tudor. And um, it's really that's why I'm I'm a Rolex guy because because I I do get off on Rolex and having, you know, a Rolex as his Rolex, and so. Uh, yeah, I would consider that a double-edged sword. It's good sometimes, bad sometimes. Yeah, All right. Movement-wise, it's it's I got an ETA. Um, now I'm guessing that this is a really jazzed-up ETA, and it's not like off the shelf. I know they they do decorate it, and and so I think this is probably you know I don't really have any facts to back this, but this is probably the best ETA that you can get. I don't know much about ETA, but if I had to hazard a guess, I would say that this is probably at the top. So, um, but again, I'm sort of just pulling that out of thin air. I'm, I'm making a lot of assumptions is what I'm saying. I do know that this is an incredibly accurate watch and it's probably minus one every couple days, minus one second, second every couple days. It's, uh, you know, it's basically what happens when, when Swatch Group puts a bastard in the belly of, uh, a Rolex. You get something like this, right? Um, all right, let's see. There's a little bit of rollback, okay, with the, with the bezel, right? And that's a minus. But I think this bezel has been taken on and off, and I think an RSC, Rolex Service Center, could probably probably fix that. I think the, I think the spring has been compromised, and bent and messed with, and I think Rolex could fix that. So um, I think the rollback and and the the complaint there has more to do with it being messed with than um, anything that Tudor did. All right, so 
Uh, we'll see. That's one thing that when I do take it into RSC, I'm going to have them look at it, and I'm going to bring that up. It just doesn't sound as healthy as I think it could, and there is some bezel roll back, and so I'll bring that up and just say, can you guys replace the spring and just, you know, does this feel okay to you guys, and, you know, just kind of work on this, please, and I'm sure they will. All right, so another negative. As much as I love the, the crown guards, this is a pretty big crown, right, and it juts out there, and if I were looking at this on paper, I would say, are you sure this is going to be comfortable? Um, it actually is. I mean, I have no problem with it. Let me just put it on. It it doesn't it doesn't dig into my wrist at all. But this is a watch you really want to size correctly because if you don't and it does slide down, you're gonna you're gonna get some dig all right now I'm, this is about as much as i can i'm sort of doing this on purpose bending my bending my arm up like that and you can you can see now this is really unnatural um but you know i, I do push-ups in this watch right and I'm, I'm pressing down and i guess it is digging in but you know it's not uncomfortable and not, again that's really unnatural so um just in daily life uh i have no problem there but if this were too loose i would so you have to size your hydronaut correctly, or you're gonna um, you're gonna get poked by that um, massive protrusion right there. So um, it's sort of a a complaint in theory, not in practice. I just you look at it and you think that has that's got to be a problem. But it actually isn't, just as long as it's uh, um, sized correctly. All right, um, anything else? Yeah, the wetsuit extension is, I mean, you have to have it. Um, it's, uh, yeah, you have to have it. I mean, it's not a dive watch if you don't have it, but but it is kind of a pain in the ass. But if it didn't have it, it wouldn't be a real dive watch. So, so I can't complain about it. All right, and I think the last thing I dislike about it, take a look at the dial, let's zoom in, is it says Tudor print state. And prints, hmm, I don't know how I feel about that word. Look, this has a shield. Rolexes have the crown. I think it's clear that they're going for, you know, Rolex is the king, whereas this is the, the young prince. Not quite not quite up to par with the king. Perhaps uh, this is for a young man before uh, before he gets his Rolex. And and sort, sort of this is, a, you know, calling it a prince is, is sort of a, a real clear deference to... Rolex, and um, so I don't like that Prince date, but it's a Tudor convention, and it's just the way it is. And I guess if I'm being really picky, I would say Hydronaut. I mean, okay, Submariner that sounds cool, but Hydronaut sounds. I mean, look, let's be honest, it sounds kind of childish and immature. Hydronaut. That they've got the you know the Aeronaut was the GMT version, and then the Iconaut. So they're you know the Hydronaut the the aeronaut, the iconaut. I mean, it's sort of childish. It sounds like superhero business. And it's something that is not really classy. And, you know, is that so it would appeal to sort of a, a younger demographic, perhaps. Um, at the age of 42, uh, I have reservations about the hydronaut, right? I think submariner is a much classier word. And, and you know, so, so the branding can be um, characterized as a little, little immature, if you ask me. So, there you go. That's what I love about it. That's what I, what I hate about it. Um, two grand for this. I think that's a steal. And do I need two? Probably not. Does anybody need two? Probably not. But I think this is a really cool watch. And I think it's sort of an undiscovered gem. I love having it. And I don't want to sell either of them. I want to keep and hoard them. I love them. And it checks off the Tudor box. And it checks off sort of the having a good watch but not having Rolex on the dial. Again, I still feel like I'm I'm I have one foot on the path of Rolex when I wear this watch, but again, none of the perhaps negative and or positive connotations with having Rolex on the dial. Um, I would recommend this watch to anybody. I mean this this watch has treated me very well over the months and 
um, it could very well be a great one watch for those people that really aren't into uh, the the brand Rolex. Somebody like uh, Guido Pelagos who sort of has an aversion to, to Rolex. This is sort of, again, uh, a Rolex, but not a Rolex. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you enjoyed this in-depth uh, review. Looking forward to getting back to GMT Master 2. Um, but until then, um, I'm going to be wearing this a lot, and, and I do enjoy wearing this watch, and I can't wait to get it all uh, pressure-checked and, and or overhauled and take it into some water and, uh, yeah, use it the way it's meant to be used this summer. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time.